Bob. Bob is an eye roll away from being a creep. <laughs> he lives in an apartment on our block, but sits in his parked SUV for a big part of every day, just two blocks from here, actually, <laughs> often with the engine running. He usually makes lewd comments out his window at any neighbor woman. Hey, beautiful, you make my day walking by. Or my personal favorite, hey, gorgeous, have you lost weight? You're sure looking nice. My first direct interaction with Bob was when he backed over my trash cans, knocking all the trash to the street with his giant SUV. When I walked out and caught him doing it, he quickly told me that my trash cans were blocking his parking space. I told him no one had an assigned parking space on the curb except the trash cans. <laughs> but he likes the spot right in front of my house because the street light hangs directly overhead. I want good security for my vehicle, he explained. <laughs> Did he think his giant SUV was special? He already put an anti-theft bar on his <laughs> steering wheel plus sat in it 10 hours a day drinking, occasionally driving off to get more booze. I wanted to suggest that if he didn't drink at 10 a.m. until he passed out, that, he might be, that that might be the safest thing he can do for his car. But I refrained. I didn't want any more interaction with him than was absolutely necessary. A few days later, he explained to me that his daughter was going to buy him a condo so he'd be moving soon. Great news, I wanted to shout. Great news for me and everyone else on my block who he harasses. My daughter, he continued, is going to buy me two condos because she's so well off and is going to give one to me. He'd end each version of his explanation with, so I'm moving soon. That was 20 years ago. He explained to my husband Eber once that he was training with the Navy SEALs. One with them on North Island Beach, he said. Right, that's why his belly looks like a senior version of the Big Lebowski's. And his white skin has the faint splotches of nicotine. He does have a Vietnam vet Navy sticker on his giant SUV, so maybe there's a smidgen of truth to it. Maybe. I used to be a dog trainer, he told me another time. I had 27 dogs I took to dog shows all over the country. My wife and I would travel all over the United States. His wife is a mystery. Eber and I have seen her a combined total of five times over the last 20 years. All we know about her is she's black, as big around as Bob, <laughs> Blob, and she... <laughs> and usually wears a house dress. We imagine she sits in their dark apartment smoking all day while he sits in his truck drinking. I owned a trucking company and made a lot of money on all the semi-tractor trailers I sold. Wow, I lied back. Bullshit, I thought, but just gave him a cursory smile, reminding myself not to engage and I could be on my way. The rest of our block jokes about Bob. When we walk our dogs or have a cocktail on our porches, we share our Bob stories. Everyone's had some sort of run-in with Bob. Nothing dangerous, mostly ridiculous, and always annoying. Paul, Paul and Sissy, who live just below Bob's bedroom window, tell about how they have to listen to Bob and his wife making love to Barry White songs. <laughs> Their baritone voice singing, uh-huh, keep on doing it. Never, ever going to give up whatever you want. <laughs> we all tell stories about the repeated nights that Bob calls the police to come rescue him from his wife or one of them is having a heart attack or some other emergency. Those false alarms have gotten so frequent that the EMTs stand outside the ambulance smoking a cigarette or shooting the breeze while one of them goes inside to check on the status of Bob and his wife. My favorite anecdote I share with the neighbors is when I walked by his SUV one day and he was on his phone, speaking loudly as usual. I assumed it was a healthcare worker on the other end of the line because he said, I can't piss with it, I can't 
fuck with it and I want you to fix it. I walked a little faster that day. Another time I walked out my front door in the middle of the day and our entire dead end block was filled with 16 cop cars. I counted. Parked higgledy piggledy as though they had just rushed in to stop a serial killer. I saw Paul in his front yard as I watched cops with SWAT stamped on the back of their bulletproof vest slink across the lawns of the neighbors. Did Bob call the cops again, I asked Paul. Yeah, it looks like it, he said. I continued on my way, figuring I'd get the whole story later. Sure enough, when I came back home in a couple of hours, the cops were breaking down their rifles, pulling away in their Crown Vicks. When I saw Bob standing by his SUV talking to a cop, looking a little bit scared, I asked Paul, what happened? He called 911 on Ben and they sent the SWAT team. Ben? Ben played the French horn for the San Diego Symphony. He was as much a criminal as my dachshund. When I ran into Ben a few days later, I asked him what the story was. He laughed and said he didn't know. He'd been told the SWAT team was called and he was at rehearsal downtown. Bob told me a few days later that Ben had wielded a large rifle in his face and he had had to call the cops because no one was going to threaten him with a gun. <laughs> Eber and I speculated that maybe Bob mistook a bassoon for a shotgun. After that, Bob went back to just calling the EMTs regularly on Friday and Saturday nights. Bob goes missing for a few months now and again, and we usually figure it's DUI jail time or maybe the false alarm with the SWAT team gave him a little time away. I don't know. Bob doesn't share the truth, and honestly, we're just glad for the reprieve. So we didn't exactly notice when we hadn't seen Bob for several months. We just figured he'd move to that fancy condo his daughter bought him. In the meantime, a stray cat had come to our glass back door and begged to be let in. His little hunger cries got to me. So it took a few tries before I relented to Eber's pleas to adopt him. Elmo was a scaredy cat. He'd never wanted to be away from my side for long, so he stayed inside. Occasionally, if I was in the front yard, he'd come and play with me while next to me. One day, Bob lumbered up the sidewalk. He's back. He walked up to my front walkway. Hey, beautiful. Ugh. Elmo, in the meantime, went scurrying to the front door like he'd seen a coyote, clearly frightened of Bob. I was a little frightened of him, too, but you never let a creep know you're scared. Rule number one of women's self-defense. <laughs> With Elmo safe inside, Bob said, you know that's my cat. It is, I said. You haven't been around for months. Yeah, I found that cat when someone threw it out of a van onto the freeway. I stopped right there and picked it up. I rescued it. It had a broken clavicle. <laughs> a broken clavicle? Yeah, I rescued it. The things people do to cats would amaze you. But I stopped right there on the freeway and took that cat in. He's my cat. You've been gone a long time, I said. He was hungry, so I fed him. I left food for him, Bob said. I left a big bag of Friskies on my back porch. I didn't say that he doesn't have a back porch, nor did Elmo have opposable thumbs to open the bag and pour himself a <laughs> serving. But I did say that I had fed Elmo, and he lived at our house now, and you can't leave a cat for three months and expect him to be yours when you get back. I named him, Bob said. I named him Kit Kat. Get it? <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> like it was such an original name. <laughs> no cat's ever been named Kit Kat before. <laughs> he had a broken clavicle, Bob repeated. <laughs> I just shrugged. You've been gone a long time, I said. I went to my daughter's medical school graduation up at Berkeley. She just graduated. She's a doctor now. She's going to buy me a house. I'm going to be moving soon. <laughs> yeah, right, I figured. I'm not that lucky. 
He got the hint and walked away. <laughs> I asked my vet the next time I saw her if cats even have clavicles. <laughs> she said they did, but it was such a tiny bone that it was unlikely there would be an issue with it. <laughs> Elmo has since passed away. Bob can barely walk to his SUV anymore. He's in such poor health. But the EMTs still come on the weekends and smoke cigarettes while taking turns checking on Bob and his wife. Time passes, and Bob still churns out the lies. Eber and I have a running joke that as long as we know who the neighborhood creep is, we don't have to worry it's one of us. <laughs> so in one way, I've learned to appreciate Bob. <laughs> Every time he tells another whopper, I can't wait to share it with Eber and the neighborhood cocktail gatherings. Will I miss Bob when he's gone? Doubtful. <laughs> I guess the entertainment value will be missed. But like a stray cat, I imagine Bob wants his pleas for attention to be heard. So my heart does go out to him. He's slowed way down and usually is out front in just his bathrobe now. I try not to look when it's hanging open part way because I'm pretty sure there's nothing on underneath. <laughs> so he's still a creep, but more of a reminder of time passing. He really will one day move to that big mansion in the sky that his daughter's gonna buy for him. <laughs> hey, beautiful, Bob hollers at me from his SUV window where he still sits and drinks in that bathrobe. And now he's found God. So he tells me he's praying for me. And then he adds, I thought you were a teenager at first. You look so young. I wish he didn't lie about everything. Yeah. <laughs> Amy Wallen, ladies and gentlemen. Amy.